Hello. Today we're going to be looking at y equals mx plus b word problems. And this is for unit four, describing and constructing functions. So we're actually going to start constructing some functions on our own. Um, so today we'll interpret rate of change and y-intercept in the context of a problem. We'll fill in tables, write linear equations, and talk about input and output values. When you lose, you get up, you make it better, you try again. Serena Williams. All right, let's start with a problem. So a gym has a joining fee of $20 and then costs $10 per month. Fill in the table and write an equation to model this situation. So I want to start with my table. I'm going to use M for months and T for total cost. Sometimes we can change our variables so that it makes more sense for our problem. But we always have the X values on the left side of our table and the Y values on the right side. So this is also like X and Y, but we're going to use M and T. So we have a joining fee of $20. So before we even start going to the gym, we have to pay that joining fee first. So that's $20. That's at zero months. Then each month after that is $10. So we want to find out what is our total cost that we spent at the gym going um, through each month. So when we go the first month, it's, it's, we're going to get charged $10. So then the total we've spent is $30. Then another month goes by, we're charged another $10, and then the total amount we've spent at the gym is $40. And then after three months, we'll have spent $50. So let's look at this in terms of slope, because now we need to write this equation. Two things we need to write in equation are slope and y-intercept. So the slope is the change in y over the change in x. So my change in y, my y values are going up by 10. They're going up by $10 a month, and the month are going up by 1. So that would be a slope of 10 over 1. We know how to find that from a table. We also can just look at our problem and say $10 per month. So that means we're going to multiply $10 times any amount of months to find out how much it is. So over here, we can fill this in with 10. Again, our T is also kind of like our Y value, and this M is like our X value. So now let's find the Y intercept. We know from a table that the Y intercept is the point where X is zero, or in this case, where M is zero. So that would be 20. But let's look at it from our, um, the context of our problem. The joining fee is $20. That's what happens after no month. That value is not going to change. This is the value that changes, right? So this joining fee is like that initial, what are we spending first? And it's not multiplied by anything. So we can take this information from the word problem and put it into an equation. So T equals 10 times the number of months plus 20. So let's talk about initial values and recurring events. So I'll have you put a star on the initial value. So our initial value, which is the beginning or starting, was $20, so this is where we started at $20, our y-intercept. And then what is the recurring fee? That's something that happens more than once. So our recurring fee is $10. It's recurring, it happens more than once. This initial value only happens once. So we'll circle our recurring fee. So our recurring fee is like our slope, and the initial value is our y-intercept. Let's try another problem. A licensed plumber charges a service fee of $150 plus $80 per hour of service. So here's the equation for this situation. T, which is going to be our total cost, and H, which will be the number of hours. This should be T. Um, so we have T equals 80 times the number of hours plus 150. So now I just want to know what does the H and what does the T represent? So the H represents the number of hours because we multiply the number of hours times how much it is per hour. So H is hours. The T represents the total cost because if I have number of hours times 80 plus 150, that's how much the service will cost in total. So that is my total. 
Now, how much would four hours of service cost? So you have a project that needs to be done with your plumbing and it's gonna take four hours. How much will you have to pay? So we wanna know our total cost. Let's leave the T alone equals $80. H is the number of hours and we have four hours here. So times four plus 150. And I don't need to do all of this in my head, but T equals 80 times four is 320 plus 150 equals 470. So in total, it's gonna be $470. Um, just looking at this from the point of our y equals mx plus b um, situation. Hold on, I lost my pen. Oops. Looking at this from our y equals mx plus b, we have that um, we have that y is the output. So that's what comes out of our function. M or the slope is our recurring value. X is the input or what we put into the function, and B is the initial value, which could also be our y-intercept. This is our slope. So let's try this problem. The Nintendo Switch costs $200 and the online membership costs $20 per year. I'm gonna write an equation using X and Y. So X is an input value. So what are we putting into this function? Well, we're putting in how many years? Because I can't know the total cost until I know how many years I've been paying for the membership. So let's let X be our years and Y be the total cost. So um, $20 and the online membership is $20 per year. So 20 times X or the number of years plus 200 will equal my total cost. So y <clears throat> equals 20x plus 200. Let's answer some more questions. So what does the y represent? Well, we just said the y is going to be my total that I've spent on my Switch and my online membership. And what does the x represent? Well, that's going to be the years. So we have to multiply the membership cost by the number of years. My initial value, well, first I have to buy the Nintendo Switch before I can buy the membership. So it's going to cost me $200 just to buy it first. That's my starting point. The recurring value, well, I pay $20 over a course of however many years. So that's going to happen more than once. So the recurring value is 20. All right, another problem. A bike rental company charges customers an initial charge plus a daily charge, move this, <laughs> plus a daily charge to rent bikes. The initial charge, oops, the initial charge is $20 and the daily charge is $5. So after zero days, I have to pay that initial charge first. So my initial charge is going to be 20 because I have to pay that first before I can start riding my bike. And after one day, I have to spend, I have to pay them $5 per day. So I have to add five. So then $25 total. And then I got my bike for a second day. So it's going to be another $5. <clears throat> Not a bad deal. So then I have spent a total of $30 for two days. Then a third day goes by another $5 and I've spent $35 on my bike. So let's write an equation. My initial charge is 20, so nothing changes. That doesn't change. My recurring value is $5 per day. So $5 per day plus the $20 initial charge is going to equal the total cost. So y equals 5x plus 20. Let's say I wanted to find out how, many, how much five days would cost. I just put in five days in for X. So five times five plus 20. Y equals 25 plus 20, which would be, it's kind of messy over here, $45 for five days. My final question, 
a rental company charges $45 per day, as well as, a, as, well as charging a one-time $25 fee for a GPS. I love a little GPS in here. <laughs> Which equation best, uh, below best represents the total cost T for D amount of days? So $45 per day should look like 45D. 25 um, is a one-time fee, so nothing's changing there. That's going to stay the same. So I'm looking for an equation that is T equals 45D plus 25, and that is B. See you next time, if I can find it.